Hi there. In this short video, we're going to be talking about workspaces and discussing when you should use a workspace versus just using a private message to share a document or message with someone. So let's jump right into my system and we'll get this conversation started. This is my Verify home screen. You can see all of my workspaces here on the left. I've got a few of them archived and I can access the archive by clicking this little arrow. I can also see on my home screen that if I click on the contacts tab, I can see all of my Verifile contacts here. So I'll go back to the workspace tab. So what is a workspace? A workspace is the primary organizational unit inside of Verifile. So in other words, it's a container. Think of it as a place where you can add guests, message threads, and documents, and keep them all organized inside a workspace. You can see I have workspaces with different types of names. I've got a few clients here. I've got a project. I've got a case, um, the name of a person who I'm working with. I've also got a workspace called storage, and I've got several others here. But anytime you have a complex set of information, a lot of discussions, anytime you have a lot of things to organize, you're gonna to want to create a workspace. Workspaces are also the only place where you can have group threads. Inside your contacts tab, you can have one-on-one -on -one threads. These are called private messages, and you have one with each one of your contacts. But if you wanna have a thread where you have more than one person involved in the discussion, you have to use workspaces. So let's create one so we can see how this works. To create a new workspace, you simply click the plus sign and give it a name. I'm just going to call this one test workspace. Click OK. Now you can see it here at the top. You can also see a little gear icon here that lets you do a handful of different things in Verifile. If I click the little gear icon, you can see a list of options. So in the case of a workspace, when you click the gear icon, you get the options to view the workspace, rename the workspace, mark the workspace as unread. So sometimes you might want to save something inside a workspace to read later. You can give yourself a little reminder by marking it as unread. Or you can archive the workspace, which would put it down to your archive down here. Right now we just want to take a look at this new workspace we've just created. So I'm going to go ahead and just click it. Now I'm inside my workspace. Now you can see it says get started by adding a guest. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to click this blue button. And I'm actually going to add several guests to this workspace. So I'm going to click some of these people. Let's say these are all people who I want to be involved in this project. I'm going to click this to add these five guests to my workspace. Now you can see they're all here. And you'll notice that each one of these guests, when I click their name, the private message with these guests appear in the middle here. So even though these guests are guests in this workspace, I still have access to their private messages anytime I want just by clicking their name which is extremely handy for communicating with these folks outside of maybe the topic of the workspace. So one of the reasons I created this workspace is because I want to have a group thread where many people are involved in the same discussion. In order to do that, I need to create a workspace thread. So I'll go ahead and do that by clicking this little blue plus button here. I'm going to name this group discussion and click OK. And you can see I've created this workspace thread. It says group discussion. It says private. No guests have access yet. That's because I haven't given any of these guests access to view this thread. If I want to give them access, I just click the little gear icon and click manage permissions. Okay, I want to manage who has permission to view this group thread. And so these are the guests that I added to this workspace. So I'm going to go ahead and give them all permission to view this thread. So I select all and click save. Now you can see all of these little tiles here, 
those are indicators of who has access to this thread. And I've got all of my guests here. You know, I also want to have a thread where only Dale and Harry are involved. So I'm going to create another thread. This one is called Timeline. Let's say for this thread, we're just going to be discussing things related to the schedule. So I'm going to click OK. Again, private, no guests have access yet. How do I give permission to access this thread? Click the little gear, click Manage Permissions, and I said I want Harry and Dale. Click Save. And you can see here the little tiles, HM, DM, that stands for Harry Maguire and Dale Marvin. Those are the only two people who can view this thread. So now you'll notice in the middle here, there's nothing in any of these threads. I haven't added any messages or documents, but I can do that very easily. So let's start with Harry and Dale. So, hi guys, please take a look at these documents and let's discuss. That's the message I'd like them to read. And then let me add a few documents here. Click Send. And now immediately, Harry and Dale are sent emails letting them know that there is something new for them to view in Verifile. Okay. And over here on the far right, it's showing me exactly which documents are inside this thread called Timeline. Okay. So now I want to go into my other thread, the group discussion. This is for everyone to see. And I'll just say, hello, everybody. Welcome to this project. Please review the attached. And let's attach a few documents for this group as well. This may be some different ones here. Click Send. OK, so now you can see these three documents and this message have been added to this thread called Group Discussion. And all of these people, Stanley Applethorpe, Harry Maguire, Dale Marvin, Dana Shibley, and Matthew Sidano will all be able to see the information I've put into this group thread. And again, over here on the far right, these are the documents that this thread contains. There's also a little blue link here. You can see it says Show Other Workspace Documents. When I click that link, it will show me all of the documents in this workspace. So this includes all documents contained in any of the workspace threads inside of this test workspace. If I don't want to look at those documents, I can just click to hide them. Now I'm only looking at the attached documents for the group discussion workspace thread. Click it again, it shows me all. Click it again, and it shows me only those documents contained in the group discussion thread. OK, so let's say I've decided that I don't want Harry to see this thread anymore. I want to remove his permission. Well, you might have already guessed how to do that, but I'll show you. You go to the group discussions thread here on the left, click the little gear icon, click manage permissions, and I said I don't want Harry to see this thread, so I click this toggle. And now you can see Harry no longer has access. His tile no longer appears here, and his name is no longer here and he can no longer view what is contained in this group discussion. He can still see what's contained in the timeline thread. You can see his name here, his tile here. So that's essentially how workspaces are organized. As I said, you'll want to use a workspace whenever you want to create a group thread, whenever you have lots of information to be organized, and whenever you want to have more control over permissions. You saw how easily I was just able to remove Harry from the group thread discussion. So that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching this video.